This is a little bit of a vanity video, but it's one that I've wanted to make for years. Just how close is Microsoft Flight Simulator to reality? I fly commercially all the time, of course, but I've never flown myself until this week. So now, let's compare. First, a brief history of the venerable Microsoft Flight Simulator and, well, my history with it. This is a series older than the PC itself, and it's probably responsible more than any other game for popularizing the simulation genre. The first flight simulator was developed by Bruce Artwick and sold under the Sublogic name. It was available on several computer platforms, but the release that probably popularized the original game more than any other was the Apple II version in 1979. However, most FS fans think of the PC release as the first real release. This is the version that had real gauges, real airports, and still looks like a distant ancestor of the most recent release. I remember playing this version at the time and thinking, I gotta get a PC. See, there were lots of arcade-style space and flying shooters at that time, but they were simple games that didn't attempt to model physics or any aircraft systems. Flight Simulator was different, much more complex and realistic. I don't know of another game like it at the time, and it was something that truly differentiated gaming on computers versus consoles or arcades. But the Apple II was more affordable than the PC, and that's the system I ended up with. And of course, Sublogic's Flight Simulator 2, which was more or less a port of the first PC version, was one of the programs I brought home with my Apple II. I loved it, despite the fact that it featured wireframe graphics and still ran at literally one frame per second. The PC version ran a lot better. Flight Simulator in those days would be ported to various other machines. Here it is being used as a featured game for the Atari XEGS. I guess intended to show off the hybrid computer slash game console nature of that machine. It finally became a PC exclusive series in 1988, after Bruce Artwick left Sublogic and began working on PC releases for Microsoft full time. It was something of a system seller for the PC for at least the next decade. But Microsoft tired of the series around one of those lulls when the world was declaring PC gaming dead. The last major release from Microsoft was Flight Simulator 10, or FSX as some people call it, but I won't, way back in 2006. FS10 was kind of a watershed in realism out of the box, or at least it was intended to be, not all of us really knew any better. A lot of people, myself included, still run this release, albeit with various patches, fixes, and add-ons to improve the experience and try to bring it somewhat up to date. FS10 is also still available on Steam, licensed now by Dovetail Games, although the Steam edition is mainly just stock FS10 with all the patches and updates already applied, along with the Acceleration expansion pack. So it should run reasonably well, but you don't get much of anything in the way of new upgrades. I actually have this release too, but I still play on my boxed copy more often because it's more compatible with my add-ons. A few years ago, Lockheed Martin, yes, the people who actually make real airplanes and weapon systems, bought the professional and academic rights to the underlying FS-10 technology and have released an updated sim called Prepared for, yes, professional and academic purposes only. And it's now fully 64-bit and has some updated graphics and other things. It's worth pointing out, though, that these screenshots feature areas that actually have scenery either by default or as add-ons, which will be important to remember later in this video. Now, I'll probably move over to Prepared eventually, but for those of us who have been on FS10 for a long time, it's just a huge pain in the ass reinstalling or even rebuying add-ons and getting everything to look and run right on our systems again. FS10 was up against the same thing when it was released. A lot of people even today are still sticking with FS2004 for those same reasons. So that brings us up to date and to the point of this video. Just how realistic is Flight Simulator 10? Now I'm not a professional pilot, yet, and I don't pretend to be. At the time of this video, I've flown one flight by my own hands, including takeoff, climb out, maneuvering, approach, and landing. Coincidentally, it was in an aircraft that's featured in FS10. In fact, it's even available with the same paint job. That plane is the Cessna 172S Skyhawk with the Garmin 1000 glass cockpit. There are add-on Cessna 172s out there that amp up the realism of the stock FS10 model, and I'll talk about them as the video goes on, but for now I'm focusing on the stock glass cockpit Cessna 172. My aim is to replicate my introductory flying lesson as closely as possible within FS10 to see how it looks and feels compared to the real thing. 
I looked up my flight path online to duplicate it as closely as possible, and I even found the weather reports from that day and time and entered those same conditions into FS-10. I took off from Republic Airport in Farmingdale, New York. In real life, taxiing is done using foot pedals only. Tricky at first if you're used to driving a car. You can simulate this in FS-10. There are plenty of pedal setups available, but at least using a joystick on the same axis, which is what I have, ground steering seems a lot more effective and sensitive in the game. In real life, you have to use differential braking on most turns. FS-10 seems more sensitive by default for those using standard joystick setups. Now, FS-10 has a bunch of realism settings, but if you set the sliders to full realism, I think you get some pretty highly exaggerated torque and gyro effects from the propeller. The Cessna does have a single engine turning in one direction, so it's going to try to pull the plane to the left. That is realistic. But in real life, it's pretty easy once you've got the plane going straight to keep it going straight, whether on the ground or in the air. With the FS-10 sliders at full realism though, that thing pulls like you're in a car with two flat tires, even at low RPM. For me, setting the sliders in the middle feels more like the real thing. Here's takeoff. Real life and FS-10 planes seem to have very similar takeoff performance. Of course, it's obvious from the get-go that the graphics in FS-10, as good as they were 12 years ago, are anything but realistic. And this is with a few lighting and autogen upgrades. Sound, though, is pretty close. FS-10 does its best to simulate wind effects, but this is the most immediately noticeable difference between the sim and reality. The Cessna really does get blown around pretty good in even a light wind. My instructor noted that I had a death grip on the yoke just after takeoff, and that's because even after 30 years of simming, the desire to overcorrect for wind effects was almost overwhelming the first time I took control of a real plane. Trained pilots have a feel for this and know what they can ignore and what they can't. But for me, it was a new experience even after a lot of hours of simming and a lot of commercial flights. This is what force feedback sticks were supposed to help simulate, but even they could only approximate the feeling. You're inside a little box with wings with nothing underneath you and the wind bouncing you around like you're a soccer ball bobbing in the ocean. There was not much turbulence the day I flew, but still there are constant eddies in the air that you don't feel in a large airplane and can only see a representation of in FS-10. And FS-10 doesn't really do a very good job of even simulating the visual aspect of this. There's no real way to simulate constant light turbulence in the game. Selecting light turbulence means it's going to go on and off at intervals throughout the flight. And, not to dwell on those graphics, but man... <laughs> The basic shape of the land looks pretty good, but the detail level is just not there. I was pleasantly surprised to see how close the avionics were to the real thing, even in the stock FS-10 Cessna. Yeah, it's obvious that not all the switches, lights, and knobs are in the right places. Oh, cut the bleeding heart crap, will ya? We've all got our switches, lights, and knobs to deal with. They are in some of the third-party versions, like the Caronado 172. But those two displays look almost exactly as they do in a real-life visual flight rules configuration. The stock FS-10 Cessna even has a built-in flight management system, so you can use real-life procedures and fly real airways and routes if you want to. I didn't do that on my real-world flight. We just took off and flew around for a while before landing on the same runway. But from what I've seen, even the FMS looks and works basically the same way in reality as in the game. Of course, one thing you don't hear in the real-world video here is all the ATC chatter. You only hear that in the headset. And on New York Approach, which is what we were tuned to, there's a lot. Southwest 2776, 360 knots, so 
Heavy cat tower one one on a point one. All right, nineteen one. We got the uh, traffic in the runway in sight. Jeffrey twenty seven seventy six. Jeffrey nine fifty eight. Reduce speed one seven zero. Low to one seven zero. Jeffrey nine fifty eight. FS-10 has some pretty annoying ATC. I remember being wowed by it at the time, immersed in the total realism of being ordered around by unseen minions, but I pretty quickly caught on that the system only has a few voices, they all speak super slowly, and they can only give you the most rudimentary of instructions while ignoring real-world procedures completely. On my real-life flight, we were not in controlled airspace and so weren't in contact with ATC, but we were monitoring and there was a lot going on. If you're interested, go download Live ATC for your cell phone and listen in on New York approach frequency. It's always pretty hectic. But even with a ton of add-on traffic, which I have in FS10 but turned off mostly for this video, all you're going to hear is a lot of really unrealistic, very slowly delivered instructions that sound like they're all between the same three very busy or very schizophrenic people. There are add-on ATC systems for FS-10 too, but all of them have their pros and cons, from robotic voices to forgetting about you on approach, and none are really an ideal replacement for the default system. New York approach, Delta 2096 is out of 7,700 to 2,000. Delta 2096, New York approach, roger. Altimeter, 3012. practicing turns here, and I do think both the clouds and water in FS-10 look pretty realistic, at least here. There's an exaggerated bloom effect in the real-life video because of the camera phone sensor. In reality, those clouds look very similar. Here my instructor decided to fly around the lighthouse on Fire Island a couple of times. It's beautiful to see when you're up there. Of course, none of this is in FS-10, and there are no add-on scenery files for it that I could find. They could have at least gotten the roads and building types right, though. This is a major beach in New York, with parking lots, landmarks, and lots of other junk. Nope, in FS-10, it's all just residential neighborhoods and forests. This gets back to what I was talking about with the scenery actually being available. All versions of Flight Simulator have some very meticulously modeled scenery areas, and many more that just use generic buildings and textures. This part of Long Island is one of those generic areas in the game. As such, it probably doesn't look that much better and prepared. And yeah, I'm banking a little steeply in FS10 here. I'm definitely not ready to do this myself in real life. By the way, lots of parking available at the beach today if you want to go. Lining up for landing now. I was surprised in real life at how easy it was to spot the runway and get lined up even from 10 miles out. Flight Simulator has always felt like landing in fog, going all the way back to the original. And that's due to the filtering done on faraway textures. You can probably tweak this, although I'm guessing there's an overall visual quality cost to doing so. So I've always left it on and just used the best type of filtering available, which in this case is anisotropic. It was also really easy to stay reasonably well lined up in real life, whereas in FS10 I always feel like I'm chasing the runway. And again, that's with the same winds and a bit of a crab in real life. Here's touchdown. I floated a bit in both real life and FS10, but more so in FS10. Again, it's a feel thing. 
Now, this all applies to the Cessna flying visual flight rules. Flying airliners in real life is a much less seat of your pants experience and relies a lot more on things like hitting reference speeds and flight path angles. In other words, instrument flying. Maybe someday I'll be able to do a second comparison of that experience. Regardless, I'm still pretty impressed with FS-10's realism given that it's 12 years old. Most of its shortcomings are not things any sim could really get right. But still, I'd love a VR flight sim at some point with updated graphics and better default ATC. I'm sure that's wishful thinking, but a guy can dream. And yes, these are the kinds of things I dream about.